expecting the House to take up the proposed gun ban today, but the legislature's been busy doing all kinds of other stuff. Good morning, Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk, and the Illinois General Assembly approving a measure that regulates lawn sprinkler installations. All right, so if you've got a lawn, you want to keep it green, you want to install a sprinkler, and you hire a lawnscape architect, well... That lawnscape architect is going to have to uh, hire a uh, certified plumber to come in and uh, inspect that uh, that sprinkler system. So the measure requiring anyone installing a lawn sprinkler system in Illinois to have a licensed plumber hired for inspections passed both chambers. House Bill 4245 was filed by uh, State Representative Jay Hoffman. It requires irrigation contractors to have their work looked over by a state licensed plumber or face a $10,000 fine, and he talked about the bill on the House floor uh, just the other day, and uh, here's Hoffman. Act that we passed uh, years ago regarding landscaping and licensing landscapers, and indicates that they will be extended from January uh, 1st, 2024 to January 1st, 2029. Now, uh, State Representative Stephen Reich, he voted against the measure and said that there's no reason for the regulation to be in the books. I don't think government should be involved in this, to be honest with you. The bill went out of, on, on, um, out of committee on leave, but having thought about it, um, I, I, I'm not so, quite so sure anymore. So, And uh, he goes on to complain about uh, just seems that it's micromanaging of sorts. Even Republican State Representative Mark Batnick not seeing the necessar- necessity for this legislation that ultimately did pass both chambers. Why we need them to look at the little, I mean, I know neighbors all the time, they just replace their own heads all the time when one breaks, they, you know, kids are playing in the yard, lawnmower hits it. I'm just wondering why we're doing this level of regulation. But Democrat Jay Hoffman, he said that uh, this is similar to other laws that uh, are already on the books when it comes to licensed labor. What this simply does is it clarifies that an inspecting licensed plumber must inspect every aspect of the sprinkler system. But under current law, a licensed plumber uh, must only ins- must also inspect the sprinkler system. We're just clarifying what needs to happen. So, uh, if you got a landscape architect who is putting a sprinkler system in, uh, they have to. If this measure gets signed into law, and I fully expect it will, uh, he'll have to get uh, somebody over from the uh, plumbers union to head on over and uh, take a look at that installation. Uh, take a quick call here at 217-629-7970, where you can call in live and local at any time throughout the program, and we'll put you on the air just like this person. Good morning. Who is this knothead again? Which one? Uh, that, Jay Hoffman, brought, Democrat that, from that Swansea. Brought this, that, that, that brought this bill up? Yeah, uh, this wall? Jay, Jay Hoffman, he's a Democrat from downstate, down from the uh, um, uh, Swansea area. What in the hell is, what are we coming to as a, as a state that you, you mean to tell me that there is no bigger problems than to worry about a goddamn sprinkler system? All right, I appreciate the call, you but uh, no, me, man. I, I, I listen, I, I, I appreciate the call. Uh, you got to be a little careful there from time to time on uh, um, the words you use. But uh, anyways, I, listen, I, this this happens all the time. It's 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 various uh, laws that are implemented to impact various industries. And uh, you have some who criticize these types of laws as what's called protectionism. And you require somebody to get licensed for a certain job. Uh, and that, uh, you know, we've even heard people getting uh, uh, having to get licenses for interior decorating. Uh, and you have an interior decorating lobby that wants this license to be required so that people have to go through this lobby, this association or this union in order to get trained to get licensed. So it's a kind of a, a circular type of uh, back scratching type of operation. That's the criticism of it. Others say it's important because we have to make sure that we have properly licensed individuals to provide uh, services that uh, that that can withstand scrutiny and that can be you know safe and effective uh, and so on. And it's about consumer protection. So those are the, kind of the arguments on both sides here. But you know, on the other side of it, people say, listen, uh, lawmakers can chew gum and walk at the same time. They can pass gun control bills and 
licensed uh, plumbers to check out uh, lawn sprinkler system bills. So, hey, you know, it's uh, uh, they're able to do multiple things at once. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Yeah, good morning, Greg. Uh, you know, the, the other morning you played a little excerpt from the gentleman that is the head of the Senate <clears throat> or the state of Illinois. And he said to do with this gun uh, bill, he says, we, you know, we're he's dem- wanting accountability. Well, you know what? As a taxpayer, I want accountability. I want to see the roads get fixed. I want to see the budget get balanced. I want to see all the, the uh, oh, things going wrong, you know, the, with the state as far as the financing, uh, you know, you name it. We just want accountability as well. So, come on. You know, what, what, is, what is with all this? This is the legislature in action. Uh, This is the legislature, especially in the final hours of the 102nd General Assembly, uh, passing uh, the last minute things they need. They say they need to pass. Uh, And and it always happens. It seems to be a pressure campaign of sorts that uh, is is a holdover from the Madigan era. Madigan's no longer the Speaker of the House. But listen, he would wait until last minute to drop 300, 400,000 page bills, and then they'd have to vote on them in the early morning hours because nobody really had a chance to read them. Uh, so it's this, it's this interesting pressure campaign, intentional or not, I'm not sure. That's just how it seems to work. And uh, we're yeah. at the last day now here of this, uh, this particular General Assembly before it turns over to a new General Assembly starting tomorrow, but they're not going to start working on the budget right away. They're going to take like three or four weeks off before they come back and then uh, uh, do a whole bunch of more business. So, yeah, it's just, uh, I guess, the way the cookie crumbles, so they say. Well, sure, they got to find a way to spend that $12,000 that they're going to be getting. That's so, right. you know, well, we'll about, talk about, way, let's... Yeah, we'll talk about that coming up and just how much uh, state legislators are set to get, as well as how much the state constitutional officers that were just inaugurated are set to get in their salaries paid for by you, the taxpayer. Stay tuned. We'll get to that and more here on WMA. Springfield's Morning News with Greg Bishop. Weekdays 6 till 9 on 92.7 WMAY. And talking about legislation that has passed the state house and is uh, either in one chamber or in another, or it's on its way to the governor's desk. We talked about the requirements that's onto the governor's desk to have a licensed plumber look at and evaluate a sprinkler system for your lawn if it's installed. Uh, but another measure looks to modify the timeline that state facilities have to accept criminal detainees that are unfit for trial. We've seen this play out here in Sangamon County and in counties across the state where even before the COVID-19 pandemic, the Department of Human Services had been delinquent in accepting criminal defendants, people who are facing charges, crimes uh, that are in county jail but suffering from mental illness, and a judge says you are unfit to stand trial, the state's supposed to take them into their facilities, evaluate them, rehabilitate them, get them to be able to be fit for trial, and then they can go back to the county jail to be fit for trial. But that's been delayed in so many different cases across the state, even right here in Sangamon County. Uh, So a measure did come up uh, to provide a bunch of different funding for mental health services, uh, but it also a little provision in it dealt with uh, changing the timeline, seeming to uh, try to circumvent the lawsuits that have been filed against the governor in which the Department of Human Services has been found in contempt multiple times for not complying with state law to transfer these particular uh, detainees that are deemed unfit for trial. So on the Senate floor, and this is a measure I believe is queued up now for the House, uh, it would ultimately change the timeline. Here is State Senator Steve McClure and also uh, State Senator Ann Gillespie uh, debating this provision back and forth. And uh, it's something that is is a, a small aspect of the proposed legislation, but McClure doesn't like the idea, calls it a poison pill. First of all, there are some good things in this bill. There's some good funding. And the problem with bills this large sometimes is there is a massive, horrific poison pill that's put in. This is that poison pill. I can assure you, this portion of the bill is unfair to everyone. And not just the people that are in these jails with mental health issues, but also to the sheriffs, to the state's attorneys, and to the defense attorneys. Proof of that is the fact that state's attorneys and defense attorneys are 
are suing together. Public defenders and prosecutors are joined together in lawsuits, very upset at the fact that these people that need mental health treatment are languishing in these jails. In many cases, they are deteriorating at a much faster rate. In some cases, that deterioration is not going to be recoverable. These county jails do not have the resources to deal with people with severe mental health issues. And sometimes they're a danger to themselves, and sometimes... First of all, there are some good things in this bill. There's some good funding. Let's start that back and sometimes up. sometimes they're a danger to the deputies that have to secure these jails. So why on earth, in the midst of a lawsuit, a bipartisan, multiple bipartisan lawsuits saying that this is unjust towards these folks. Why is the Senate coming in to say, well, we're going to now allow you to keep these people in county jails in perpetuity? Thank you um, to my colleagues for these questions. I just want to make a couple of statements to clarify some of these things. There is court confusion and there are lawsuits, but part of the reason for the court confusion is that there is not a standard, there's not a clear statement in the law today of what the time frame is for determination of appropriate care, appropriate um, treatment placement. That is what this law is trying to do in part. So the measure uh, obviously moving through the state house. We'll see what happens with that. And if it uh, negates any lawsuits that uh, counties have against the state that they've been found in contempt of. So stay tuned. From the Fly SPI studios, take the easy way out. WMAY-FM, Taylorville, Springfield's News Center.